So do you want to be a better decorator? Listen in. I'm Kelly Wilkness with Anita Joyce, and this is Decorating Tips and Tricks, Episode 308, Design Lessons to Make You a Better Decorator. And you can find the show notes for today's episode at decoratingtipsandtricks.com slash 308. Well, my first tip is listening to all 308 other episodes <laughs> of Decorating Tips and Tricks, and mm-hmm. then you will definitely be a better decorator, and you'll have a lot of fun. But we're going to sort of sum it all up today and give you some tips uh, about lessons that will make you a better decorator. So specific lessons that you can put into effect in your own home straight away if you'd like to. Mm -hmm. Are we ready to start? Yes, I think we are. Okay, well, I thought we already started. (laughs) Well, then I say something and then you say, we haven't gotten to that yet. The party, sometimes I do that. But you do. The party starts when I show up, baby. So let's okay. go. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, my favorite tip, my all-time favorite tip, I think this is the starting point. Take a picture of each room. This is your starting point, and this is what you're going to look at. Um, this is how you tell what's going on. Because if you're in the room, especially if it's your house, if it's a house that you're used to looking at, you're not going to notice things that... When you take a picture of your room, you're going to notice that this chair is too big for this area or this uh, other thing, this artwork is blocking something. You are going to see things that you don't notice until you take a picture of it. And for example, you know, that's how you see if something's working, if something's not working. I mean, just think about when, uh, you know, you think you look pretty good and then you take a picture of yourself and you're thinking, oh. That's not really a good shirt for me. <laughs> but I didn't know that till I took the picture. It's not you, honey. It's the camera. It's the angle. It's the lighting. Well, I didn't say it's weight. <laughs> it's the shirt. So sometimes we just need different clothes. Yeah, different clothes. That's good. Yeah, I never thought about it that way until Anita told me that uh, taking a picture can really, really focus you in on what's going on. And it so does. And I've learned that through blogging. And then her tip about, you know, when you're blogging and you're taking a picture, like you've already like done it up. Mm-hmm. And usually it looks pretty good because you've working been working on it all day or something. But right. this is just taking a picture of a room in its natural state, so to speak. And then you can tell, do you need to add something? Do you need to take something away? It really is like so eye-opening, which is kind of funny because when you're looking at it with your own eyes, you're not really seeing it the same way that you do in a photo. It's kind of weird and magical. Right. I mean, and it's sometimes, again, sometimes things don't translate well. So maybe something's not going to look that great in the picture, but you're just stuck with it because of some practical constraint that you can't tell from the picture. Uh, Something that I get, you know, uh, comments on is in my living room, people say, why did you put those two bookcases in front of the windows? Well, I didn't put them in front of the windows. The windows are just very small and on top of the bookcases. Plus, I didn't want a big view out those windows because my house is probably five feet from the house next door. And unless you really want a good look at their, you know, hardy plank, I I don't think there's, you know, there's just nothing to see there. So, uh, you know. I don't really want a good look at anybody's hardy plank. Let's just leave that where that is. Exactly. So anyway, but, but it is a great place to start for sure. Good. Well, like anything, great design and decorating has a formula to it. There are building blocks and sort of structure to it, right? And then you're going to add the art, which is sort of your, you know, your eye, I'm using air quotes, as they say, or your flair. And some people, the flair comes naturally. Some people can learn it. But knowing the lessons will help you enhance the your own formula and then help you get to the artful side. So that's some of what we're going to be talking about today. I think taking a picture is a great place to start. You might even want to make a little, you know, photo album on your phone or on your computer of your house as it is and then, you know, t- then change something up and take pictures again and see the progress and see what works. I I think think it's fun to mm -hmm. keep pictures over time of the same room, which as bloggers, we naturally have that. But I think that's fun for anybody who's interested in decorating to go back and look at this is what my house looked like this year. This is what it looks like the next year and the next year. And it's really fun to see the evolution of the room. 
Oh, yeah. Or not. Or not fun. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you're like, oh, I thought that it was so great. It should be improving. It shouldn't be going worse. No, no. I mean, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It, like when you look back to the older things, sometimes you're like, whoa. But at that time, it was fab. You know, But it's time. fun then to see, look how far I've come. And right. plus, uh, things change. What was in style 10 years ago is not in style now. So, you know, some of it, just because it looks funny to you now doesn't mean that it looked odd at the time. Oh, yeah. Of course. Of course. Now, I do always come back to sort of the functionality of the room as mm-hmm. my starting place. So yes. that's where I start with the layout. If you don't have a good layout, no matter how much pretty decor you slap on top of it, it's not going to feel right. It's not going to have the right vibe because what you're getting when you're putting all the pieces and the colors together is a certain feeling, right? So really you're you're building a feeling in the rooms is the way I like to look at it. So if the layout is off and it doesn't function right, you're never going to get the right feeling. So you have to pay attention to how you're going to come into the rooms and out of the rooms and and how people are going to use each room and what each room is going to be used for and decorate to that purpose, decorate to that um, traffic path. Those things are really important to keep in your mind right away. That's right. And you really don't want major traffic uh, paths blocked. So you do have to be very mindful of that. And there are online programs that you can use to do the layout. When we moved into this house six years ago, I really went old school which I love technology. So I was kind of surprised I decided to do this, but I got out the gridded paper. I measured all of my furniture pieces and put them all on the grid and moved them around and spent a lot of time deciding where things were going. We went from five bedrooms down to three and less living areas. So there was quite a bit of rearranging that had to be done. And it was so helpful to have all that. And because I spent so much time playing with that, when we got ready to move in, I knew exactly where everything was going to go. And for the most part, everything stayed. I mean, I've, I've shuffled furniture, but you know, if I said a chair went in a particular place, I still have a chair in that place. It just might be a different chair. That's so interesting that you did that. Like that seems to me like, wow, that is so cool. I'm picturing with the graph paper and everything. I just would not do that. I totally think it's a great idea. And if somebody is like a person that would do that in graph paper, I think that's awesome. I'm more of the person like get it all there and then let's just slide it around, you know, (laughs) like put the dish rags under it or those little slidey things and just see what's going to work. And even before that, if it's a house you live in now or a house that you're going to move into or something like that, if it's a house you're already living in, then just be mindful of how people are functioning in the spaces and how they're moving in and out of those spaces. If it's a place you're going to go, you're going to move into, then give yourself some time when you get there to to see how it's going to work for you and your family before you start purchasing uh, items or before you're starting having things moved into, you know, the, there where it's going to permanently be. You know, give yourself time in the space. And if you're already there, just reevaluate it because it might not be functioning the way, it, the best way that it could be. Right. And I do want to throw in part of the reason I spent so much time doing this was because I knew a lot of our furniture was going to have to go. Oh, and so no, it was okay. Book. No, it was good. No, no, no. It moved on to somebody. I know, but it's hard. It's still no, hard. It wasn't. No, it, it wasn't? was good. It was, okay. I, it was good. It was good. Okay. But the thing is I'm paying per hour for someone to move things. Oh, I had yeah. a moving van Smart. that took stuff to the consignment store. So I really needed this because I didn't want to pay for someone to move it across town to the new house. And then for me to say, you know, I don't yeah. really like it here. And then to pay again. That's why, I, you know, because I kind of too like to be very spur of the moment and decide as I go. But I was very careful on this just to keep the expenses down of all the moving back and forth. So, you know, there was a few things. I think that's, you're right. I mean, you kind of need to move in your house. But on the other hand, you kind of, I think if you have the paper and you can kind of play around with it, you know, there's certain pieces, it doesn't matter how you arrange them. They're just not going to work. Yeah. 
you know, so I mean, I think anyway, it was helpful for me as far as saving yeah, money. Yeah, that's so smart, especially uh, and now when you're explaining the what was going on, that is mm-hmm. really smart. Well, and if you've got things going up and down, I had some big pieces that I did not want to go, oh, just set it down here. I'll figure it out later. No, no, no. I want the big guys moving it up the stairs because I'm not doing it later. Right. But I will suggest if you do not have those sliders, those are worth their weight in gold. And that's what you put under all the legs of your furniture so you can move it around yourself. I often move pretty big pieces of furniture myself. And I can do that because I use the sliders. And the thing I wanted to point out is that there are sliders for wood floors and there are sliders for carpeted floor. Just make sure you buy the right type for your type floor and you'll be good to go. Yeah, those are smart. Definitely like my little dish uh, trick would not work on carpet. (laughs) I was going to say, just they're not that expensive. Just no, they're them. not. They're not. They're not. Okay, I'm going to get those just like I got those. Wait a minute. Hold the phone. What? Do you not have sliders now? No, I don't have sliders. But I have, the, it, I have the glass food containers. I okay. have those. All right. Well, I'm next listening time to you, we, babe. I'm next time we talk, I want to know that you have these sliders. Well, I have 90. 90- Five percent of my house is hardwood floors, so I just put a little dish rag under, <laughs> slide it over. <laughs> Next, okay, yeah, okay. you know, all right. And okay, so then you got your layout. You're taking your pictures. You've got your layout. You want to create flow. Flow is really important, and this is a, a design element that, you know, even if you feel like you haven't achieved the flair and the eye and the art of it yet. You can do this and it's going to seem like you have the eye, the flair, and the artful panache of a a high-end decorator. You're going to create flow throughout your home with color, texture, and design elements. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So you're going to use your limited color palette and you're going to pick Maybe it's neutrals and a pop, or maybe it's all poppy colors. Mm -hmm. Whatever your colors are, you're going to limit them to maybe three main ones. Maybe you have a fourth of a a smaller amount Mm -hmm. of the color. But you're going to use those colors throughout. And then when you come to your pop or your accent color, you're just going to have little dots of it, if you will. Like can you can almost connect the dots through your house. Like here's a pillow, and then there's a um a vase and then there's a throw and then there's maybe a potted plant and the pot is this color and you can almost connect the dot of these pop colors throughout your house here is your flow and you can do the same with texture adding different textures throughout not all of it on one end of the house or not all of it just in one room and the same thing with design elements i have one particular design element that runs through almost my entire house certainly the first floor is these little white pictures i love them and oh, some of them are right, little and right. some of them are big so mm-hmm. i shouldn't call them all little white pictures so let's just say white pictures i have them in almost every room and there's some of them they're empty. Some of them, they're functioning as storage. Other ones, they're really small and I'll put a little sprig of boxwood in them, something. But you, your eye, when you come into my home, will see this same shape and the same color in various places. And this creates the flow. And this is what really unifies your decor. Well, I'm so glad you said that, Kelly, because that I think people ask or wonder, why do we always talk about a limited color palette. Why do we keep harping on that? The reason we keep bringing it up is because that is what is going to give your house a cohesive feel. If there are just a few amount of colors, that color is what tells your eye and your brain, this all goes together. And it is really one of the best ways to pull together a couple of different design styles. If you have the same color theme throughout the room, or throughout from one room to another, it's going to feel like it goes together, even if you use different furniture styles together. So absolutely. And you've used the white pictures as a, as a theme throughout your house. And I actually have a lot of pictures myself. They're not all white, but I do have quite a few. And I think the reason that I love them so much is because they're so perfect for holding flowers. And we're, you know, you and I just both believe in bringing cuttings in from the yard 
or bringing some flowers in from the store. And really we're talking about, you know, $5 bundles, not, not big expenses here. And so it's nice to have a little something to put the flowers in where you don't have to put them in the same vase all the time. And little pictures are perfect for that. Yeah. So perfect. And I love what something Anita said about, um, you can have different styles and it's much easier to work with different styles when you do the limited color palette and when you've got this flow of the colors throughout. So that's why I was able to add this black leather chaise to my predominantly old world slash French uh, living room and where I, I'm able to then add in some other more modern lines in other areas of my home because the color palette is limited. It, you So you can be a little bolder with your juxtaposition of styles, which really makes your home look like it's a designer home, that it has been decorated and a lot of thought has gone into it. And it you start to develop your own style, not it's all cookie cutter. Oh, I get all the same thing. So using the limited color palette and creating this flow allows you to, like like I said a little bit earlier, sort of develop your eye and your flair because it lets you go a little bit further. It lets you be a little bolder because it's going to all work together and you're going to love the style that you come up with. Right. And, you know, I also really love, Kelly, how you talked about these pictures are a theme throughout your house and how that's something that you adore, something that's just very uh, meaningful to you. You find them to be beautiful. And I think that's another important lesson that I really want to mention today is that it really is going to make your house feel so much better if what you're using are things that are meaningful to you, something special to you. And it doesn't have to be a specific theme. I mean, they can be a lot of different things, but I think you want to select things that you adore. And you know, like I said, I've got a lot of pictures. I collect dishes. And so I actually have dishes uh, throughout the house. That's probably the common theme. In fact, my mother-in-law uh, used to call my house, you know, the China cabinet. Uh, <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> OB. Oh, I know. I know. Yeah. But she was right. It's full of a lot of dishes. Uh, but I, but I have other it's things. Better than too. being full of a lot of other things. Anita. Yeah. That's you're exactly. You're good. That's okay. exactly. That's right. So, you know, I mean, that's, what's meaningful to me. It may not be meaningful to you, but there might be something else that, and it doesn't even necessarily have to be a collection per se, but I definitely do recommend that you Again, select things that are, that you just are drawn to rather than just looking that it is the right size or the right color. You know, we've talked about the limited color palette. However, I don't think that's all there is to designing a room. You really don't just think about the color when you're pulling out accessories for your room. Yeah. For sure. And if you really want some in-depth lessons about how you mix styles, then you really need to look at Anita's book if you haven't. If you don't have it, I really suggest that you do. Um, French Accents, it's in its second edition. It's fantastic. I've read it cover to cover more than once and not because she made me, because (laughs) I wanted to. And I really, really love it. And I, I learn something every time I pick it up. I, I might just read a section or take a look at a even just taking a look at a photo because Anita is a master at mixing styles. You see what she's, she, I mean, she loves all the, the Frenchy stuff. She's definitely a Francophile and she loves a little something, a little gilded and she loves the feminine touches, but then she's got it, you know, all on a hide rug or she's got something rough you and mixed in with it. And that is really such a hallmark of an excellent decorator that um, she knows she's got the eye to put it together and she's fearless in doing that. So I would suggest that you get that book and um, I'll put the link in the show notes. Do I do the show notes this time? No, you do? I, I do. think I do. <laughs> but but while Whoever I'm doing does, the show notes, I we'll will. put them in. Right. But uh, thank you for that lovely. But lovely it's so true. When I was saying those words about, you know, bringing different styles together and, and learning to do that, your book and your style was coming to mind. Oh, well, thank you. Well, I'm thinking about these pictures and how I love having flowers in my home all year round. And I was thinking about your book, 
Uh, oh, stop. And you don't have soul- to come right back at me. Uh, please, I know, please. but I'm serious. My Soul from Home, A Year in Flowers, which is also available on Amazon. But it is a great, uh, she's got all these ideas for floral arrangements and there's one per month. And it's, uh, you know, based on flowers that are, are available that month. And uh, I just love your use of a lot of different containers for the flowers and uh, the way you bring them together in a special way for each season of the year. So, yeah, that's something that we'll include. And well, so thank you, you girlfriend. You need that to check that nice. out. Thanks. Um, and then when you're adding, so another lesson, when you're adding your decorative items, try to aim for timeless. You know, we just recently did uh, an episode about uh, trends that have lost their tread. So you don't want to have really trendy things, uh, you know, in decorative items that you plan to have for a long time. If you love something and you love it for a season, then it goes. And if it's an inexpensive item, fine. But if you're talking about some decorative items that you're going to spend some money on and then you plan to have for a long time, that they're going to be more foundational items in your home, then you really want to aim for something that's timeless. And then you want to put them together in groups in, you know, the word is vignette, which you all are very familiar with. And so many of you create absolutely beautiful mm-hmm. ones. And we've seen get, them. Yeah. And you sent we us just photos. got a picture of we one. We did. Recently. And uh, we love to see them. And uh, uh, so pretty, uh, you know, a lot, lots of times it's just something personal or some flowers are involved or something. They're just really lovely to look at. And we really appreciate that. So They're also you- unique. That's the fun yes. thing about a vignette. It's not, there's not one formula that you have to use. Some have trace. Some don't, some of the, they're big, some are small, but they just all are so special. And I just love the way everybody makes them all so unique for their style. Right. And when you're doing that and you're achieving that, that is adding such a personal touch to your home, which is part and parcel of you know the lessons that you should be learning from today's episode is personalize your home. Don't be afraid to do that. You don't want it to be a model home. It doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, so many designer homes are not perfect. There's just something a little off about them or a little wabi-sabi or just, you know, something is rubbing up against something else and creating this great tension. It's not just a boring, as I was saying, like almost like a model home. You know, when you went to go into a model home, what that feels like, it might be beautiful, but it's not really stirring your soul. Don't you just love a great recommendation from a friend? Well, we're delighted to be recommending these companies and their wonderful products to you today. And let them know your friends at DTT sent you. Inevitably, with the new year, come wellness goals. One very effective and easy to reach goal is to add DOS to your wellness regime. DOS is expertly formulated organic wellness shots that support your liver in one delicious drink. Formulated with ingredients clinically shown to support liver health, potent turmeric, milk thistle, and ginger. There's zero sugar and zero calories. Did you know that your liver performs over 500 special functions? Since I learned all that my liver is doing, I started with Dose to support all those vital functions. I take a shot of refreshing Dose two times per week to combat everyday toxins from food, meds, alcohol, and unhealthy air. Since starting with Dose about a month ago, I am definitely feeling an overall improvement in my health. So if you want to give Dose a shot and invest in your health like I have, Dose is offering DTT listeners 15% off your first order, plus an additional 15% off if you subscribe for a monthly delivery. That's 30% off your first order. So go to dosedaily.co slash DTT and use the code DTT. That's dosedaily.co.co slash DTT and use the code DTT. Green Chef is a delicious delight any time of year, but especially during the holidays. What a wonderful vision to behold of the Green Chef boxes on your doorstep. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. And it makes eating well so easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat a more balanced diet. So let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season. And if you've got guests coming, shop Green Bundles. They're now available at the Green Market. It's your one-stop shop for nutritious grab-and-go breakfasts, including vegan options, brunch kits, wholesome lunches, ready-to-eat snacks, veggie sides, and more. 
You can feel your best this December and do your best with Green Chef because they offset 100% of the delivery emissions as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. Go to greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 60DTT and get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 6060DTT to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. And you know, my mother was a painter Uh, She doesn't really paint much anymore, but she always told me to add black to any painting. There should be some black in it. And I like to apply that to a room as well, because I think every room needs a little bit of black in it. It's a little bit of drama. It's a little bit of depth of color. It has some grounding to it. And especially if you have light walls, I think it's really especially nice to have some black in the room. And and if you don't like that, maybe even some other dark color, but I really do like adding that wherever I can. Yeah, I 100% agree. In fact, I mean, the whole palette of my house is, you know, one of the main colors is black. I have black mm-hmm. in almost every room. And even if it's just in a little touch, it really does so much. And even if you say to yourself, oh, I'm not really a black person. I don't want, you know, I don't like that color. But you almost don't even notice that it's black in a lot of cases. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like it just does something to the other elements in the room. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? It's It's not like you're like, oh, that's a black chair. But it's just, it makes everything else look better. Right. It's how it all works together. And that's what you need to be thinking about. It's not, it's, I think it's a lot easier to pick out individual items than to make it all work cohesively together in a room. And that is really the trick to decorating a room is making it all work together. So I think that black helps ground it and it helps pull it together. So I think that's what it it does for the room. Yeah, agreed. And how about a tall potted plant? Oh, yes. Oh, I love, yeah, I love adding plants, but especially a nice tall one. And I'm trying to decide if I can keep a big one alive. Just try it. I'm struggling with a ficus that I have in in my bedroom. It's, I think... It got uh, too much water over the summer. And I mean, even back in the summer, and I think it just kind of went into a little shock. It was doing so well. And I'm a, you know, I, I probably have, you know, two green thumbs, but it's, I, it's going to be okay. But you know what? It didn't cost that much. I got it at Home Depot. And if I have to take it outside, you know, here I can even try to plant it in the ground. Um, but it's been so worth it to have that in my bedroom. I just love it. So if it does not last, because there's definitely something going wrong with it, um, I'm I'm definitely going to replace it. I'm not going to put a faux and I'm not going to go without the height and the the, the interest. And I love the way when the sun comes in my bedroom in the afternoon, the way it sort of plays off all the leaves. It's just so pretty. What do you think about a potted uh, olive tree? Do you think that would survive in my house? Not my house, but a house. Or would that be really bad? I think olive might be a little hard inside, mm. depending mm-hmm. on where you are. I mean, they are, it's a Mediterranean plant. They do yeah, really it's hot well. And humid here, but yeah. but they don't like humid. Oh, oh, it's dry. Well, it's not, they're like, not going to like Houston then. No, but it. But I'm saying in your house, it might be okay unless you know it gets super humid in the house. They mm-hmm. because it's a Mediterranean climate, so it's like like where I am in California or. um In Tuscany, like that is where that type of plant is going to thrive. Yeah, I actually have one in my backyard that's done quite well. So, oh, you do? Okay, but right, it's it's yes, it's done quite well. But I didn't know how well it would do inside. Yeah, isn't that odd? (laughs) Yeah, I have the olive bushes. Not, I don't have any trees, and they just, I mean, they are tough as nails. But I don't know that I'd put one of those inside. But I do definitely advocate for boxwoods inside. They do very Mm. nicely inside. Oh, planted. Yeah. I mean, living, not preserved is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe I'll try something like that. Yeah, they do really well. And then, you know, maybe six months down the line or so, particularly if it's not getting a lot of light wherever you have it, then you just plant it outside and then you get a fresh one. And then it'll perk up outside and then you have another one for another several months. So uh, another thing I'm thinking about are natural uh, textures to your house. Uh, so I'm thinking of different fabric types, rugs, maybe a sisal rug, maybe a wool rug, 
uh, blankets, wicker baskets, uh, curtains, uh, pillows, throws, all of this, I think, adds such, these textures and layers add such a warmth to a room. They just make it feel so personal and cozy. And to me, that's the whole point of decorating is to make your house feel like a, a, you know, a place that's safe from the world for you and for your family, for your friends. And I think all of those things make it feel like just a really safe place to be. Yeah, I I agree. And your home should definitely be a sanctuary. And what you're talking about is these layers, right? So different Mm -hmm. layers of varying Mm -hmm. textures is such a great way to decorate. And even I, I know what you're saying about the feeling and that and cozy kind of makes you think of warm or it's cold outside. No matter where your house is, you should have layers. It's just so much more interesting than just having one flat surface or one flat thing going on. It really adds depth to your decorating. So, you know, try it. You can always take it away if you feel like it's too much, but put another rug on top of it. You know, put another throw on it. Try another pillow. You know, keep the receipt if you don't think you're going to like it or move it to another room, but give it a try because we think you will definitely like it. So sometimes it just needs a little bit more interest. Yeah. Yeah. And another thing I think we were talking about, you were talking about go for the classics when you're Mm -hmm. buying your big ticket items. This is not something that you want to be having to replace your sofa because the pattern on it is no longer in style. So we do recommend solid if colors. I cat. Well, yes, that would be one that it might not be, mm-hmm. but really any pattern. And I mean, I speak from experience here. I've bought several patterned sofas that, um, I don't know. I didn't even learn my lesson the first time. Well, I <sighs> only, Oh, deep sigh. Only budgetary concerns held me back from doing one of those sofas that had all the different patterns, like the giant cabbage roses on the back and the stripes on the side and like something. I I thought those were just the bomb and I I wanted wanted one one so badly. I did (laughs) so badly. And I'm so glad I never got that. They were like 10 grand crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. yeah, so so be careful about spending money and you know, if you're buying something like a sofa, you really want it to be comfortable. Try sitting in it, make sure that it's going to be comfortable. You know, even like when we podcast, I had switched the chairs out and the chair I had uh, the the newer chair I had for a few months, I could not stand sitting in it for for an hour. Oh, is that why you were cranky some episodes? Come I on. was, yeah, I had to <laughs> switch my chair, so I went back to the my original chair. Um, yeah, because it was more comfortable. So there you go. I think did did we do an episode on sofas? We should probably link that here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I know yes, we, we I, did. yeah, I'm pretty sure we did that. So that's a really good lesson to learn. Just a, and very practical. Another great decorating lesson to take away from today is blend your storage with your decor. Oh, you know, good idea. There's plenty of things that are decor related that are empty or might have lids on them or could have lids on them. So think about how you can do that because lots of storage stuff. It's kind of ugly. And then you've got it like where you, you, then you got to have the storage bins or the whatevers. So this way, if you're going to buy an ottoman, see if you can have one where there's storage in it and you open it up. I have a big crock uh, in my kitchen, which for the longest time just sat empty. And every once in a while, I might slip actually a box wood in it. Those, those that came from the nursery containers in the nursery containers slide right into it. But when I'm not doing that, it just sat empty. And so now I use it for the doggy toys because it's a big one. Great idea. Yeah. And so I can't see them because they fall down. It's, I, I, you know, those, each one of those crocs has a number on it to delineate, you know, how big it is. I think it's like a five or an eight. It's a super big one. And so I put them all in there, but they're easy to reach in and pull something new out. And, um, so, and then I use my white pitchers. One has my, um, dishwashing tabs in it. The other one has matches in it. The other one has my olive oil in it. So that's displayed on my counter. So anytime that I can blend a beautiful decor item, something I'm going to want to display anyway with storage, I think like that is such a win. 
So think about that when you're buying or just look around your house and see what you have. If you have ba- uh, baskets someplace, see if you can, if they are ones that are like kind of luggagey or ones with a lid, put your old tax returns in them or something, you know, so you don't have to have the ugly stuff around. Yeah. I never understood why there was so much ugly storage containers <laughs> because I thought, you know, you can it's buy something nice looking to put this stuff in. You don't have to put it in this ugly box or this mm-hmm. ugly plastic bin. Right. Yeah. I mean, like if you're putting it in your garage, fine. But if you're going to keep it right. in your house or you have to keep it in your house, exactly. then it might as well be beautiful. So I like to use the lidded laundry baskets that they look like trunks with the lids on. I have several of them. And I was just putting some uh, a slip cover in there or actually it was some extra bedding I put in a big basket like that. I didn't, I ran out of room and I thought, oh my goodness, this, em- this is empty. So it was great. Oh, that's so smart. Yeah. I have, um, cause we don't really have a linen closet per se. Yeah. The I don't either. The house is set up. Mm-hmm. So, um, we have some extra bedding for the pullout in Laura's room and she had this hamper, which <laughs> surprisingly the dirty clothes never went in it. They were just on, <laughs> they were just there on the floor, easily accessible to the person who she would be washing them. Suggestion. Yeah, it was yeah, a it suggestion. It was so kind of her just to leave them right there for me so I could yeah, easily well, get them and laundry them. So I said, forget it. This thing is just sitting here empty. So instead of taking up space in her closet, I took the extra bedding and slipped it all in there. So now she has this, it's a really pretty old wicker hamper that just happened to be in the perfect color pink that's in her room anyway. And for months, it just sat empty. Now it has all of that in there, an extra pillow, the duvet cover, and the sheets and uh, pillowcases for the the pullout bed. Mm. Perfect. Excellent. Yeah, I was very pleased with that. And then you guys are going to crack up because <laughs> what did she do literally like two days later? And I was like, clean up your room. She stuffed all her dirty clothes in there like on top of that. <laughs> I was like, uh, that after actually, all this time. Something similar Like a moth to the flame. I'm all of a sudden it was say. like, looked like, oh, I should put things in there. But, you know, that's just the way life is, right? Well, it's I got in funny. trouble for taking a chair out of somebody's room mm-hmm. because wait for it. It was used to throw things on. Ah, well, mm-hmm. useful. Not for sitting, but Not just for, for storage. Catching things. Yeah. Yes. I don't well, doubt it. It, catch, it caught something before it hit the floor. So. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Well. So it happens here too. It happens. I'm sure it happens everywhere. I Probably a few people are nodding or laughing along with us at that. Another great uh, lesson is symmetry. Employing symmetry in your decorating is really going to help you, Um, especially if you're new at this. We have a whole episode on symmetry and also asymmetry, which is still a form of symmetry, but it kind of just like knocks it off a little bit, knocks it off balance a little bit. That's kind of like the advanced uh, symmetry uh, decorating. But Mm -hmm. if you have some symmetry going on, you might not even realize uh, how... It is so pleasing to the eye and how it will add some sort of calm and peace to your room. So mm-hmm. if you have three mm-hmm. candlesticks on one side of your fireplace, then maybe put three candlesticks on the other side. You know, later on when you're feeling a little bolder, you could shake it up a little bit, but try that. If you don't have symmetry going on or like two chairs, a chair on either side, balancing on either side of the sofa, something like that. And the items don't have to be exact, but they need to be the same type of visual weight. Well, I like to buy my lamps in pairs and I usually have matching lamps in a room. And sometimes the tables that they're on are not exactly the same height or even the same style or whatever. And I use books to so that the lamps on both tables, if they're end tables, for example, so that each lamp is about the same height from the other one. But I do love the look of the matching lamps. Uh, I really do. So, I mean, it doesn't work to always have two lamps, but um, it, a lot of times it does really look great. No, that's a really practical tip that you have shared with us. And I definitely keep that in mind. I find lamps very difficult to shop for. Um, mm-hmm. I don't yes, like too. a lot of them. And I think that they're a lot of them are really expensive. Mm-hmm. But yes, if you find one you like... Then maybe get two, like Anita says, because you, even if you don't use it in the same room, if you like it so much, you might use it in a different room. 
Well, that's the thing. They don't always end up together. Sometimes I move things around and they end up going into different rooms. But then sure enough, a year or two later, uh, they'll move, be moved. And then I'll end up using both of them in a different room. So uh, yeah, it usually works out well for me to buy them in the pairs. And like you said, I'm hard to, um, it's hard for me to find lamps that I really like. So when I find one, I, I like to go and get two. No, that's smart. So I think we covered a lot of Mm -hmm. lessons today. I think we gave everybody a lot of takeaways. We have a listener question from Rachel G. And Rachel has been uh, with us for quite a while. And uh, we loved getting her email and we just got some photos. She had a question about her master bedroom, which is a work in progress. And I'm looking at it right now. And I think Anita has it as well. So Rachel's question is, it's just a lot of questions. So we're just going to kind of like throw ourselves into this room rather than going question by question. Um, she's trying to finish up her bedroom and she has, it's kind of a dormered room, would you say? So the, the walls are angled. Mm-hmm. She has her bed. Uh, in front of one window with some drapery on either side of the window. So the the draperies are kind of coming down and flanking the bed. And then there's one small dresser on the side. And then it looks like a little magazine rack and a couple of carpets, nice hardwood floor. It looks like the room gets excellent natural light. She's got a little plant in there and one lamp on one side. And I, this is a, a couple. So her, I know she talked about her husband. So there are two people sharing this room. So we should keep that in mind when we're talking about it. Um, so Rachel, just to sort of, you know, you, you did ask several questions. So I'm just going to throw out my ideas. I really think, honey, your, your bed needs to come off the floor. Your husband needs to say, you cracked me up because you were saying you, you could really decorate a beautiful yurt, but yes. <laughs> yeah. No, we, we need, we need to talk to him and this bed needs to get on a frame and off mm-hmm. the floor. Mm-hmm. That will change the room exponentially in and of itself. Right. So if he is so opposed to the expense of a headboard and footboard, if you even just did a Hollywood frame underneath that uh, and had a, a foundation, I think it would just look so much better because, you know, it, it it's a bed on the floor right now. And having slept in a bed like this before, it was not comfortable. I think it may feel a lot better to get it up off of the floor. Yeah. I don't know if it's a, you know, what kind of mattress it is, but go ahead. Right. No, I think that just psychologically, even just something off the floor. So, and I need just so everybody understands when you say Hollywood frames, you're basically just talking about one of those metal frames that you can buy for the frame, Right. Just to get it up off the floor, but also there's no foundation. There's no foundation under this mattress. Right. So I don't know if it's one of those uh, memory foam mattresses mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. if it's a coil mattress, but I think it needs the foundation under it and a frame under that. Yeah. So just something, a metal frame to get it up off the floor. And then you could use a, a bed skirt around it, a ruffled or straight. It doesn't have to be ruffled, but something to get that up off of the floor. And then, um, yeah, then I don't know that you would really want to do much of a headboard anyway, because then you've got that window there. So if I did a headboard, I would probably do an iron one so that you can see through it uh, and see out the window. What do you think, Kelly? Yeah. Rachel was talking about that she was going to make a headboard. Well, I first of all, I wouldn't make a headboard if it would stand on the floor because I don't know how you're going to, there's nothing to attach it to unless you attached it to the wall or you just propped it up there. And I think that would just be literally a headache if that thing was hitting you on the head. So I would say the way you've got it situated, so everybody who's listening, it's kind of a um, a peaked room, which has got a lovely color. It's painted like a soft lavender, greasy color. Right? Yeah, it's a and nice color. A, a, a nice window with lots of natural light coming in. And the bed is sort of, you know, centered right on the window. So you know, it would, if the peak of the room would be sort of smack in the middle of the bed. So if the, there's really no other better place to put the bed. So remaining there, like Anita is saying, when it comes up off the floor, if you put a headboard there, it's going to block part of the window and maybe look odd. I would pull it, put it on a foundation, on a Hollywood frame, and then I would pull it away from the window a little bit. And I would make sure that those drapes that I had behind it 
could be closed all the way and still look good, still have the fullness. So you might want to add a couple more panels there. Yeah. So it looks like there's two panels and they look okay open, but if you close them, they don't look like they're um, wide enough to close. Right. Mm-hmm. So I would make it look like there was just sort of this pretty fabric behind as my headboard. Mm-hmm. And then during oh, the day, nice. mm-hmm. you could just open it and then you'd have the pretty window and yeah. that would be fine. And then if you wanted a situation where you could sort of like sit up and lean against something, they have all those uh, pillows that are kind of like almost like chairs in a sense, but you know, it's just the back, you know what I mean? Like those reading chairs, those right. reading pillows, maybe you could get a couple of those, or you could get some, or re- uh, some nice, um, euros that would give you some support if you wanted to sit up and read in bed. That I, that's how I would handle it. I would not go to all the effort of making your own headboard and all of that. I don't, I don't think that's, uh, at the end of the day, is going to be the look that you want. Right. And there's a small rug to the left and a small rug at the foot of the bed. And I would suggest replacing those with one larger rug. And there's some great deals on overstock.com. Uh, you can go with Sisal. I mean, there's certainly plenty of rug options that are um, hopefully, uh, you know, in, in the budget. That, and I think they'd be very nice. Oh, yeah, I agree. And I think that color, you could find a color in the rug that maybe pulls out the color in your wall and maybe go with a lighter color. Well, and the the bedding is white and it's pretty. Mm -hmm. It's pretty. I love the softness and the uh, just, I don't know, with the white on the bedding and this kind of soft, it is almost a lavender on the walls. It just looks very ethereal. Yes. And I think that would be so pretty. Yeah. With, with those changes that we talked about, I think it would look even, even better. Yeah. And if you can find either thrifting or something, or if you have something in the house, I would get another chest that's similar in size and uh, put it on the other side. So now the bed comes up and each person is going to have their own little Mm -hmm. chest or drawers slash nightstand Mm -hmm. or find something that you like. Uh, You know, it could definitely go in the lighter tones in the room because everything else is so light. Um, And um, But there's a dark chest on the right. So I don't know if you want a white on the left and dark on the right. So I probably- Oh, no, I'm saying if you you were going to change them, change them both. Oh, got it. Got yeah, it. So, yeah, yeah. Either yeah. get one that matches this one that's similar or change it both out for something and later. If, if it's a queen size bed, usually about an eight by 10 is about the right size rug. It's plenty big. Yeah, that would be good to use. And yeah, but you don't push it all the way under. You would just kind of have it maybe halfway. Yeah. Like, BritBox just keeps getting better. The new Archie is amazing. And it's not the comics. It's about Cary Grant. Archie is the brand new limited series starring Jason Isaacs as Archie Leach, the man who became Cary Grant. From the award-winning screenwriter of Philomena, Archie tells Grant's born in Britain, made in Hollywood story, the dramatic grit to glamour transformation that led him to become one of the most famous people in the world. You are going to absolutely love the acting but also the styling, the outfits, the scenery. It's the first time his story has been told in collaboration with his daughter, Jennifer Grant, and ex-wife, Diane Cannon. The performances from Jason Isaacs and the rest of the cast are amazing, and it's only available on BritBox. So sign up for BritBox today to stream Archie and other fan favorites from any device. And we have a special limited time offer for our U.S. and Canadian listeners. Get 50% off, yes, that's 50% off your first month when you sign up for a monthly plan. But only if you go to BritBox.com and use our promotion code DTT at checkout. You're going to love Archie. So head over right now and get 50% off your first month of BritBox. Use the promotion code DTT at BritBox.com. Pesto pork chops over Parmesan polenta. Not that easy to say, but oh, so easy to make with Green Chef. Green Chef is the number one meal kit company for eating well. And we have such a great deal for you. You're going to save $250. Listen on for the details on that. Green Chef makes eating well easy for any lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat more balanced meals. You know, we're getting into the busy holiday season, so it's a perfect time to have Green Chef help you out. Let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season with their chef-crafted, nutritionist-approved recipes featuring fresh ingredients and nothing artificial. 
And you know what? You don't have to lose track of your healthy eating habits during the holidays. Every Green Chef customer gets a free, that's right, a free session with their registered dietitians who will walk you through how to make clean eating work for you. So sign up for your free session and start on the road towards better health today. And the deal I want to tell you about, visit greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. So that's greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. And then, you know, again, there's a plant there. I would get that plant off the ground, maybe put it in that opposite corner, put it on a plant mm-hmm. stand, something like that. I think even though I understand the um, thought to keep it low because of the pitch ceilings, but this is exactly how my daughter's third floor bedroom is. And we've been able to sort of work around it where she's got a lot of big stuff in there. And it actually, it looks... It de- it looks really pretty great when everything's a little bit higher. You don't need to kind of come down because the walls are angled, um, especially the pretty light color you have it painted. Your eye will go up and it'll seem bigger, whereas now we're, everything is really low to the ground. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's right. Uh, yeah, so you could even put some chests or something along each of the short walls where mm-hmm. the ceiling is low because you can't walk over that direction anyway. That's exactly I've, what Ava has, a giant I've, long chest. Yeah, I've seen these done where they put built-in chests on either side of the, on each, uh, you know, on each side of the room where the wall, ceiling is very low. And it's a great place to put storage because like I said, it's too short for you to walk there anyway. And then that takes away the need for storage in the room. Uh, mm-hmm. for, for having any chests or anything. And I, so I think you have a lovely room and I think, it's a, you know, it's exciting to see, you know, what you can do with it. Oh yeah. And then I'm just looking at the last photo where uh, Rachel's showing us her uh, closet, which is, is so ingeniously done. If you, I don't know if you want to block that off, but if you did, you could just drop a tension rod or, you know, squeeze in a tension rod from one wall to the other and put up a pretty fabric. And then, you know, maybe have a tie, tie back or somewhere where you could pull back the fabric when you want to go in there and then you drop it down. So when you're in bed, you're not looking at your closet, although her closet is very neat. Oh, it looks, it's Unlike really some nice. Unlike the people the she, I live with, yes. Well, right. And it's not overstuffed. It's really nicely done. There's a chair in there and a yep. rug and a, and a, a charming chest of yep. drawers. So yeah, it's a lovely space. Really well done. So Rachel, I hope that we helped you a little bit with your thoughts. If uh, you need anybody that you live with needs more encouragement about getting the bed off the ground, you know our email. And <laughs> help, willing to help you go it. out on a limb there with you and help you out in that <laughs> regard. So thanks so much for hanging out with us today. It was so much fun. Yes, as always, it was fun. If you have any questions or if you have any tips you want to share with us, please send them to us at decoratingtipsandtricks at gmail.com. And as always, remember, we're here to inspire you to create a beautiful home. Until next time. want to remind you that we are available for design consults. We take on your design dilemmas, questions, renovations, any project you want to talk about, any room, any space. We are here for you. And we really do enjoy doing these. And I think we've helped people a lot. So if you want to sign up for a consult, head to the link in the show notes. It's decoratingtipsandtricks.com slash consult. We hope to talk to you soon.